Okay, hello everyone. I think I am live. Um, but I'm not sure. Hello everyone. I think I'm live on King's Head Theatre, but I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to wait uh, a few seconds for people to join. Hi Alex, can you hear me on Instagram? You've given me a wave, which is nice. Dramatist, you've given me a wave, that's lovely. King said, hello, James. Hi everyone, we'll, um, we'll give it a few seconds to let um, people come in. We can see you, can you hear me? That's the big question. Can you hear me, Facebook? One second, Instagram. Hmm. I think Instagram, you're good to go. So you can just uh, pause for a moment. Shardy, am I a okay on Facebook? Oh, and you can hear me. The wonders of technology. Fab. Okay, great. Um, well, we'll kickstart this session on King's Head Theatre Live. Hello, everyone. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is James Carlisle Ball. I am a alumni now of the King's Head Theatre Trainee Director Scheme, which uh, I finished in, I've just worked it out, 2017, so about three or so years ago. Um, I now work as a freelance director and have, over the last few years since leaving the King's Head, have worked on a number of projects um, as a assistant director and an associate director. Um, and this session today is talking all about um, some of the experiences I've had as an associate director, talking you through what that role is what uh, an associate director does um, and just trying to give some uh, advice and some tips on, on things that I've learned from mistakes that I've, I've made uh, over the last couple of years. Um, so uh, the difference of between uh, an assistant director and associate director. Um, an assistant uh, will be in the room and will be doing lots of, well, I'll go into it. I'll go into it, Skippy Top. Thank you for that question. But what I will first um, clarify about an associate director is that you get associate directors that work or are uh, contracted to a theatre, um, whereas, uh, or you can have an associate director that is more a representative of, a, of, a, of another director and might work on a show. So, um, an associate director in a theatre building might have like a 12 month contract and they will be supporting the artistic director um, in artistic policy. They might be developing talents. They might be doing script development, outreach stuff. Whereas the experience that I'm talking about today is working as an associate director on various productions um, and being production specific. So things that I've worked on myself are um, Amelie the Musical based on the French film called Amelie, which was at the Other Palace um, at the, in December and January, if anyone saw it and on a UK tour before that. Um, I've also worked on The Importance of Being Earnest, which was uh, at the Vaudeville Theatre in the West End, um, and uh, The Fall of Anne Boleyn at the Tower of London. Um, and these are all where I was working underneath the same director, which was Michael Fentiman, um, if anyone has heard of, of Michael, who's a wonderful uh, director and uh, and I've started as his assistant way back in 2017 on Loot by Joe Orton at the Park Theatre and I've done four or five productions with him uh, to, to be his associate. Um, so yeah, just to clarify, this is about working as an associate on a show, not being an associate in a building. Okay, so the difference between an assistant and a, an associate. Um, an assistant director um, will be in a rehearsal room, will be 
on a uh, in working on a production, but their creative input and their responsibilities will be much less than an associate. Uh, they will be doing little line learning uh, with actors. They may be making tea or coffee. They may be uh, t taking little notes and track tracking various things, which is everything that a uh, associate director does. But then when a production is actually live and up on its feet, the associate director will have more responsibility in maintaining uh, the show and working with creative teams to uh, to ensure that the overall like quality of the show is, is maintained and then also work with understudies uh, and various other things which I will go into as, as we go along. Um, so to start with, I think it's worth me sort of briefly talking about how, how does one get work as an associate director um, it's uh, and I think there is no simple answer and there's no um, obvious route everyone who, who who sort of pursues a career in, in directing um, has their own different different way of doing it I myself uh, went was fortunate enough to be uh, on the King's Head theatre trainee scheme um, which which was sort of opened a couple of doors and allowed me to meet uh, Michael Fentiman, who, who I mentioned I've worked with a number of times. And, and a lot of theatre buildings do open up opportunities to emerging directors. I mean, I know that the Young Vic, the Old Vic 12, uh, Kiln Theatre, I believe, these are London-based, uh, the New Vic, um, they have a scheme. There's, there's various schemes that are from theatre buildings that, that are welcoming emerging directors in, so it's always worth trying to check what those are. Um, the other way to, to, to become an assistant or an associate um, is to, to, to actually to do an MA or a, uh, a BA in, in directing, and there's various universities and various drama schools that will offer specific training. Um, off the top of my head, I know Birkbeck, I believe, do a sort of a, a part-time two-year MA in directing, but there's there's various methods of finding contacts through establishments in that way. Um, or, you know, I, I've, I've worked as an assistant um, to a director whom I met uh, just through through networking, and I and I met he, he I met him at the the Actors Centre in in London. I liked his work, we, we got on well, we had a coffee and we sort of built up a, a, a connection that way. But yeah, if, you, if you're seeing work, if you're going to the theatre, you're, you're watching things that you like, write to those people, tell them, I like your work, this is why I like it. Um, I want to learn from you, how can I help? These, these are ways of building up contacts. Um, and then there might be job call outs. I know, you know, it might be on Twitter, there might be someone looking for someone to just help them in a workshop or read a script or et cetera, et cetera. As I say, there's no like direct, uh, obvious route about how to become an assistant or an associate or to work as a theatre director, but your passion and your <laughs> just uh, your pursuit of, of that goal and, and loving what you do is, is going to help you. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time about about that because it's uh, it's different for everyone. But if there are any specific questions about that or people want to get in touch with me afterwards, absolutely, I'm here, rock and roll. Um, let me have some water. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got the job, you're an associate director, you sign the contract, what the hell happens next? Um, all right, so we'll go for it. We're in a stage of pre-rehearsal, so you know you know what dates are, you know what dates uh, the rehearsal is going to happen. What do you do um, now? You may be asked to do some research, which this is a responsibility that an assistant director might have, but also an associate. Um, now, examples of, of research that I've done myself: uh, Loot by Joe Orton, which is a ninety a late sixties play. Um, Michael, who was directing it, he rang me up and he said, James, I, there's a censored script. There is a censored version of this, of this play. I want you to find it. Um, and off I went and I found the, 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 the script that had been sent to the Lord Chamberlain office um, in the 60s. And they basically 
told you what you could or couldn't perform. And I found this script sent by Joe Orton in the British Library, and it, it had all of the bits that were like rubbed out that said, <laughs> you can't say this, it's too religious, you can't do that, it's a naked body. Um, and I sent that all to Mike, and well, he put it in the show. Um, other things I've researched, uh, when we did the fall of Anne Boleyn, um, which is all about Anne Boleyn's, uh, her time in um, the Tower of London before she was had her head chopped off. Um, I had to find the letters that were written between her and Kingston, um, and which was one of the guys who was sort of looking after her in the Tower of London, and then sort of transcribe this this old English into modern English, which was then used in the devising process. So what's my? I mean, so pre rehearsal, uh, pre -re um, pre rehearsal research is can take many different forms. Um, my tips for you would be if you're London based, definitely. Definitely uh, look at getting yourself a British Library card. There is like a wealth of, of knowledge and information and an archive of scripts and all sorts of stuff in there, which is a treasure trove, even if you're not like researching specifically for something. Um, or the, again, London based, but the VNA uh, archives, if you can get sign up to that, get a card. Um, there's all sorts of cool stuff in there. Um, from the from decades gone by, which you can which you can look at, they would be they're my two go to, which have been really useful for, for pre rehearsal research. Um, but yeah, that's quite fun that bit um, of the job. Um, but because you're the assistant slash associate, because you're not um, directly the, the, the sort of uh, the, the creative vision leader as the director is. Oh, sorry, things are falling. Um, because you're not the lead director you're not really involved in design meetings you're not really uh, involved in casting as much you're you're doing stuff which is going to support the director in what they do when we get to the rehearsals um which is why research is like the main the main sort of thing um when we redid amelie um, we moved amelie from uh its tour version and transferred it into the other palace it was a different stage uh, different stage stage configuration. Uh, we also some of the actors dropped out. We we had a slightly smaller cast. So before going into rehearsal, it was a I, I had to I got the, like the stage layout and I had to try and figure out. I had all these little um, <laughs> little uh, little like chess pieces and I was pretending that all of the actors were moving around and I was trying to stage restage the the, the musical for re rehearsals. If that makes sense. Um, okay, that's sort of pre-rehearsal as an assistant slash associate, but now we're getting interesting. Now we're going to move into rehearsals. Um, what are you doing? What, what, what's the point of you <laughs> being there and what do you want to achieve? So you're not leading rehearsals. You're not the director, but you are absolutely, uh, integral to, to being there. You have to absorb, observe, um, and support everything that's happening in the room. Um, as an associate, you might be, you might have a slightly more creative role. Um, so I've worked with Michael a number of times. Um, he gives me slightly more responsibility in terms of going away and maybe working with an actor on, on a scene or, or sort of just staging something or going and re-rehearsing things which you might not do necessarily as an assistant, but um, you are an extra eyes and ears in that regard on the show and what's, and what's happening uh, in the rehearsal room. But you, you wanna take notes of everything that's, that's, that's happening. So for example, with, with Oscar, when I did Oscar Wilde, the importance of being earnest, it's a really like linguistic, like robust language, loads of um, uh, epigrams where, long lines that are sort of that, that are very funny but they have to sort of rhythmically are very specific and i was jotting down relentlessly right this is how you do that right okay what's the what's the intention behind that what okay oh, what's going on here and i want to absorb all that information as an associate because i'm going to have to then rehearse the understudies later on uh, and I want to make sure that they are understanding the, the, the piece and the world of the piece within the vision of the director 
that is being made in the rehearsal room. Um, and with this regard, uh, my tip would be for anyone that does find themselves in doing this job is uh, to learn the language of the of the director, the way in which they speak to the actors. So, um, Michael, for example, if we use um, Oscar Wilde again, and I sort of spoke about the the rhythm of the text, um, he would be he would, he, would, he would often say things about about use using the energy to go through to the end of the line. So if an actor was speaking the line, speaking the line, and now I'm finishing the line, <laughs> he'd be like, come on, we need energy all the way through to the end of the line. And that was delivering the rhythm and therefore the comedy of, of what he what he heard, if that makes any sense. Um, and so I then repeated the language and the and the way in which he directed the actors to the understudies so that they um, oh, sorry, I've just been, someone's just caught my attention on, on Instagram, Skippy Top. Oscar Wilde said his epigrams should be delivered like a pistol shot, I think. Yeah, thank you. Support my point. Yes. Um, but yeah, you want to sort of reuse the language from the rehearsal room for the understudy so everyone was, is, is, is learning within the same world of, of the production. Um, other things that you want to be doing as an associate, uh, and, the, and the thing that uh, <laughs> I've sort of learned, learned the hard way, is you want to be taking tracking information of, um, of the production. So that, again, and this will, uh, when, I, when I get to talking about understudies, I can sort of explain a little bit more about, about what, why this is useful. But you want to be able to know exactly sort of how the, the, the piece is functioning in terms of where actors are walking, what's being moved, um, and who goes where and what and why, and who's got a costume change. Now, yes, this is partly the responsibility of the deputy stage manager, who is calling the show from the book and, and is also taking notes of these things. But you as an associate need to know this because you are going to have it's your responsibility at a later date to figure out how the show functions if an actor goes off and an understudy goes on now in um in every show that i've worked on with michael the understudies have played ensemble parts um now if anyone um worked or, or, sorry <laughs> anyone worked on amelie I did. Uh, if anyone saw Amelie the Musical, they'll know that there was pianos on wheels that were being moved. Hopefully this is not too many spoilers. Um, uh, there were pianos being moved. We had benches coming on to create uh, cafes. We had actors swirling around playing instruments. Now, if one of those um, actors goes off, but they're moving a bench and also bringing on a menu and um, spinning a piano, I have to figure out with the with the understudies how on earth that happens when that person is off. So <laughs> you spend a lot of time in rehearsals absorbing exactly what's happening, even though things might change, in order to be able to then figure out what's going to happen uh, in any given circumstance. If that makes if that makes sense. Go cool. more water. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I've jot, jotted down some other things that you might do in rehearsals um, on a show. So um, you might run warm-ups, which I've done. You might read in for actors that are late, naughty, or a doctor's appointment, more reasonable. Um, you might source experts, uh, yeah, and, and like doing more research. So um, for example, Anne Boleyn, we wanted to know what a the, the appropriate uh, ceremony would be for Anne Boleyn to receive, um, well, what's it called? And they give you the bread in a, in a Christian ceremony. It's gone straight out of my head. But um, yeah, how, how would the priest, uh, how would the priest conduct that ceremony? What things would he have with him? So I found, uh, I found some university experts, I think he was in Wales, who had recreated all of these, these medieval Sort of ceremonies, and I got him to to talk to me and and give that information to the to the cast. Um, sorry, production meetings. You're going to be sitting in as uh, a assistant and an associate. 
So in the pro production meeting, you'll you'll have all every member from the creative team, usually um, communion. Thank you. Uh, that's exactly what I meant. Um, so you'll have lighting, you'll have stage management, you'll have costume, uh, sound, production managers. You'll have everyone sat there uh, in a production meeting, basically updating as you get closer and closer to entering into tech and going into a theatre. And you'll sit in on those meetings. Um, as an uh, assistant, you might be, or associate, you might be doing educational workshops and outreach. You might be starting to think about what those might be. You might lead games in the rehearsal room. Um, as an associate, I've Mike, for example, has often rung me up and said, James is not going to be there for the first 15, 20 minutes or first half hour. Can you do X, Y, and Z? Or can you tighten this scene up? Or can you get them, can you get them, uh, can you get the actors warmed up? Can you make sure that the time is used and people aren't standing around and having a coffee? Um, uh, you might uh, take actors out and do line learning. These are all different things that assistants and uh, both associates would would be doing um, in rehearsals. Um, but you are facilitating the smooth running of a production. And I've often thought, and and maybe this is a maybe this is a, a, a maybe this is not right to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. So you know, whatever. But I've often sat in a in in a rehearsal in a rehearsal room and sort of thought, <laughs> weirdly, if I wasn't here, the rehearsal is going to is going to function. The rehearsal will will happen because the directors here and they they're running it. But it is integral that I'm here. <laughs> it's a really weird feeling. <laughs> it's like I don't need to be here, but if I wasn't, it would be a pretty bad thing. Um, but you want to understand every element of the show, and forgive me if I'm uh, sort of going over the same thing again. Okay, just because of time, I'm going to move on into okay into the tech technical technical rehearsals. So this is where every, all the actors and the set and everyone is moved, and the lights and everyone is moved into the theatre, and you start um, putting it on stage and all the lights and sound and you know, I think people should be relatively familiar with what uh, a tech rehearsal looks like and um, and your job again you're not leading the tech um, unless I mean I have run tech but that was a different circumstance um, but because particularly that was a re remounting of a show um, but like you're just going to be facilitating between all of the departments, making sure that costume are happy, making sure that lighting are happy, making sure that the stage management are happy, making sure that every all the actors are happy, relaying notes to actors when uh, the director is, is elsewhere running tech. Um, so we get through we get through tech, the show opens, we're into previews, um, and again, for different directors, you're going to be required to do different things. When I'm with Michael, I always sit next to him and he will watch the show and he will whisper his notes um, into my ear, which I then jot down. Now, he didn't tell me he was going to do that the first time he did that. So I sat down being like, great, here we go. My time to shine. Going to note the show. <laughs> and then uh, first cue, he was like, lighting is, lighting is late. So, oh, okay, write that down. Anyway, you're then, so throughout previews, you take, for me, I would take the notes, I then relay those notes to the actors um, and make sure that, and, and again, what, what I was saying about understanding the language and how to talk to the actors, that's something that you, you're going to then begin to start doing now. So you're not talking completely out of, out of context for how they understand the work. Um, so you go through previews, you get to press night, the show is, is great, everyone's happy, it's to where you want it to be. Uh, press night's great, you have a few glasses of Prosecco, um, and then the show is open. Right, so as an assistant director, you may or may not be asked to check in on the show uh, and, and watch the show weekly. As an associate director, 
you're almost certainly definitely going to be asked to do this. And this is where really your role begins to sort of get going. Uh, the director will probably move on to another sh another production or, you know, their, their main job is done. They've got it to press night. It's open. Bang. Here you go. So your job as associate is to keep an eye on the show. Um, now, if that is a tour like Amelie was, then that will involve going to various places in the country to make sure that the, the show is is maintaining a the correct standard throughout every performance and in every venue. That also may uh, involve um, going to uh, the, the a venue at the beginning of the week. So when, so you know, okay, so you uh, the show's moved in on the Sunday, the Monday, let's say, uh, stage management and the technical team have put the put the set in, they've tried to do that, they've, they've done the lights and everything's up and running. You will watch that opening show or you'll be there to facilitate that getting. You are the director, uh, the, well, you're the associate director be in, in representing the director to make sure that the show fits into the theatre. So quite a relatively big responsibility. You're then watching it and then you're going to note the actors and make sure that they uh, are maintaining the performances that, that are required of the show. Um, the other thing that you're going to be want to be your uh, the other thing that you're going to do is now you're going to get get your hands on the understudies and you're going to you're going to have a, a period of time in which to prepare them for any uh, for for going on stage. Um, this will probably happen around matinee performances. So um, important to being earnest, which was not on tour, was in one theatre. But I went in on Wednesdays and Fridays in the afternoon where I had three or four hours with the understudies. And I did my best to, to prepare them uh, and go through the show. Now, this is where me having the tracking information of where actors move on stage comes into hand because they have to replicate that. You can't have understudies you know, roaming around doing their own thing and changing the blocking. Um, so you need to have that information, which the stage management will have as well, but it's good to have it yourself. But you, this is where you're then also using the notes that you've made in rehearsals going, well, actually, in this production, the context of this line is this, whereas in another production, it might be slightly different. Um, so a, a good example in, uh, if I use the importance of being earnest, the two leads, um, the two lead male characters, Algernon and, and Jack, they, a, a lot of what they're talking about is they're, they're talking about these sort of hidden, hidden lives behind them that they're trying to protect and not reveal. Um, and in our production, we were sort of trying to make it quite, quite dark, quite seedy, uh, sort of, um, their sexuality was, was sort of ambiguous and, so that was what was underneath all of the language was this in this Victorian <laughs> in within the Victorian English context, these two men with with quite uh, naughty, sinful um, sort of hidden agendas. I needed to inbuild, I needed the, the understudies to understand that uh, so that they could drive through the production in the same way. Um, you're going, to, you're going to run understudy rehearsals. You may well have a understudy performance whereby it's, they get an opportunity to, to perform uh, because understudies don't necessarily get to perform. Um, they, they might learn all of, that, all of that part. I mean, one bloke in Amelie, I think he had four different parts, but that's four different musical parts and song and uh, tracks of like where to go. Um, uh, Skippy Top, will you make sure your notes match the stage manager? Yeah, and your relationship with the stage manager is imperative. You need to be on the same page and, be, and you, you're sharing things. If you miss something, they might pick something up. So yeah, your relationship with the stage manager is, 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 is very, <laughs> you need that to be um, solid. Um, uh, so I, I mentioned earlier about this, about these trackings and like how do you, what happens if uh, one actor goes off, who's going to move X, Y, and Z. Um, it's a real, uh, it's, it's a, 
it's it's like it's a real problem solving sort of uh it's a bit crazy really so again using amelie um where we had moving pianos moving benches people bringing on cajons like little drums with uh lights on uh all sorts of stuff was going on and so uh, and in various scene changes we had almost we had all sometimes all 16 actors moving things at once now if all 16 actors are moving something and then one of them goes off because they're ill someone has to figure out who covers that and that responsibility comes down ultimately on the head of the associate director um, and i made something i made documents uh like tracking cards tracking documents which sort of figured out and i did it with the understudies because there was no way in hell that i could figure it out on my own there was you know like we needed to make sure that a particular glass had come on from stage right at some point and been placed on the stage left piano so if that act is off someone's got to do it <laughs> otherwise it, the scene breaks down etc etc so you uh, that's your next job um is to make sure that you've got these tracking cards so that stage management if you're not there and an understudy goes on the stage management can stand there with these cards and go right you are doing x y and z you're covering x y and z and you're covering x y and z uh so that you can come and do the song and you no longer need to take off the cello and x y yeah the tracking is intense um so <laughs> i didn't quite appreciate that that was part of the job but it is fairly integral um another thing once the show is open the director's away maybe um and you are going to be watching the show you're going to be updating the director on on the show what's going on um and you're going to be working with stage management to problem solve both you're going to take on a, a role to I mean, there's a company stage manager who looks after the company, but you may have conversations with actors where they have concerns. You 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 step into a new role uh, when the director is no longer there. You become the focal point of the of the directing team of the creative team, and that and that um, that brings with it its own demands for for the actors and uh, and for you. Um, tips. Things I've learnt, things I've got really wrong, which um, is worth admitting. Um, on the importance of being earnest, um, I remember I was talking about if you if you've been here throughout my talk, um, I was talking about the, the the language and the specificity of the language in earnest. Um, when I then was what show watching each week, um, I got so fixated on the language that I then began to forget a little bit or lose a little bit of focus on actually what the subtext and the intention was for the characters and and that and, and that created a slight a slight confusion or a slight divide for some of the actors because a lot of my notes were then about language and not so much about the, the broader sort of sense of, of what the scene was um, so yeah being able to like keep your scope and your eyes and ears completely open to encapsulate every everything that's going on technical blocking uh emotional uh and language specificity etc trying to do all of that is, is quite tough but you know that's kind of how you learn in a weird way um you can't fixate on on one thing you do need to be aware of, of so much more that's going on um another thing that i've had a real problem with um is dealing with imposter syndrome mm. i mean i personally was <laughs> it was amazing my first my first west end show like wow here i am um and before that i'd only worked really in um in, a, in sort of fringe theatre and, and pub theatres, and I mean, uh, and off West End, uh, and yeah, get a major, major problem with the imposter syndrome. Like, oh, uh, oh, sorry, someone said, what's imposter syndrome? Uh, imposter syndrome being that you feel like you you shouldn't be where you are. 
you massively doubt your, uh, your own ability and your own use to a production. Um, feeling like you don't belong. Yeah, exactly. Um, imposter syndrome is completely normal, I think. And directing is a fairly scary, scary thing to do. Um, and just, I think, just go along for the ride and uh, actually admitting that you are going to make a few mistakes and that's that's okay and um <laughs> and actually just being nice to people that usually helps because then uh and asking for help that's that's probably the, the the thing that i should have done more is um is that there i was standing in the west end but doing this dominic john gould season and uh <laughs> going Oh right, okay. So I'm rehearsing in the theatre. I didn't know I was doing that. Uh, sure, and just asking help, asking stage management, like what, what, what's going on here? What do I, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what hours am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be achieving? What should I be doing by a certain point? Asking the director, how should I talk to the actors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just know that you're fine. And the reason why you're in that job, doing that job, is because someone believes in you and someone's given it to you already. Uh, be grateful, learn for it, learn from it, make mistakes, and that's fine. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's all good. Um, and with that, that sort of brings me to my my last point. And the thing that I've struggled a little bit with is is how to deal with older actors. Older actors are amazing, amazing people who have had careers as uh, doing this mad thing called acting. Um, and really, I think I've I've made a mistake in the past of of putting older actors on a pedestal and sort of going right. Well, they've been in the game so much longer than I have, so clearly anything that I have to say <laughs> is they're going to just swat away. Not true. Actors want to be noted. Actors want to be noted uh, correctly. They want to they want to know what's right, what's wrong, and it's just jump in, talk to them as human beings and and discuss what you think and let them tell you what they think. And be just be don't don't dodge around the don't dodge around the, the issue. Just get on with it and you'll be fine. Skippy top, you have to talk to director slash actors and crew differently. If that's a question, uh, yeah. You've got different relationships with different departments. Um, and also within within a cast, actors different actors need to be talked to in different ways. Some of them need an arm around their shoulder, and tell uh, and constantly told you you uh, you're doing a great job, or you need to do this, you need to focus on that. Other actors, you just need to go and look them in dead in the eye and say, uh, right, <laughs> you need to, you need to stop doing this, uh, <laughs> and do this, do this, and just be a bit more straight. But that's that's part that's part of directing. You'll you'll figure it out. Um, so, I mean, in terms of my notes and what I was intending on doing, I thought just was going to talk through just the, 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 the sort of the cr chronology of, of doing a production as an associate director. Um, so I'm going to like, please start firing some questions, uh, on Facebook, hello, and Instagram, hello, please. Yeah. If you've got any questions for me, then, um, now's the time to ping them on. Um, what was your biggest challenge talking, uh, taking Emily from the water mill to tour, then finally London? Um, really good question. Um, so yeah, for those that don't know, Emily, the musical started at a tiny, uh, theater in the, the water mill, the Newbury, then went on tour in much, much bigger, um, venues and, and then shrunk down to a medium medium slash large venue, the other palace uh, in, in London. Um, the challenges mostly were to do with changing of cast and changing of cast size, um, but also stage size. In the water mill, it was really, really compact. Um, and we had an, all of the staging had to be like sort of micro, <laughs> the micro focused. Whereas on tour we had a huge stage and then we and we gained um, understudies, so we we added an extra three or four actors. Um, we didn't have understudies at the watermill, um, 
And then when we went to London, some of those actors, we, we, the, the cast, the cast size changed again. So everything that I was talking about previously about um, how how does how does the show function in terms of what is moved and who does what, that all had to be refigured out every time that we moved from theatre from Watermill to tour to um, London. Uh, so that was one of the bigger challenges. But the company, the company of musicians and actor musicians were incredible. So in terms, they they adapted and were flexible to to what we required. Um, uh, it, it was just it was more logistical stuff actually. Um, okay, in terms of casting, do you prefer an actor who fits the brief, or someone who offers something different, surprises you, and subverts your expectation? I mean, definitely, you want to see it. You, you definitely the latter. Someone who offers something different, surprises you, and subverts your expectation. If that's how you feel watching them in their audition, then how are the <laughs> how are the audience going to feel? If someone if someone is is giving you something uh, something really fresh and changing your perspective perspective of of the role and of the play, then that's really exciting. And theatre is all about things changing and uh, and and being alive to to those changes. So um, yeah, I think certainly the latter. But if you fit the brief, then that's pretty good as well. Any questions on here? Okay. Uh, Reza Sof. It was so interesting to see how it went. I think Reza Sof is talking about Amelie. It's very interesting to see how it went from big venues to the other palace. For me personally, top was great for the show as it felt so intimate. The other palace was great for the show. Thank you. <laughs> Anthony Rayner. Do you prefer working on old, already done plays or something new? Um, they all bring with them different challenges. They all dif bring them uh, bring with them different. Uh, you have to approach them in different ways. Old plays that you can recontextualize and and try and think of in new ways is is really exciting. Um, but new work and working on new plays, you're, you're creating something that's never been done and figuring out what that is and fine tuning what the ideas and the and the story is 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 equally exciting. Um, so, yeah, I'm, either man, I loved it. So bring it all in. Um, where we at? Okay, forty-two minutes and a half. That's pretty good. Um, hi, Javon Mason. You've just joined, um, but I am nearing the end of my session. Um, I hope that gives those that have listened a better idea of what an associate director does and what their role is through the different parts of a, of a production running from pre-rehearsal all the way through to the final performance. Um, but so I'm going to finish it there. But what I will say is that um, we've got one more question. Very good. Would you research different way? Diff, would, would you research different way work has been done um I, I understand that question to mean that so if i was to be doing a show i would certainly look at how what previous product if it's a pre-existing script i would look at what what previous reviews of previous productions were and try and understand how different people have approached that play absolutely because that's going to tell me that's going to tell me things about what works or what doesn't work in the production um so yeah that as part of my pre-research i would look at previous productions yeah um what i was going to say before i finish is um i am really delighted to be doing this for the king's head it's a fantastic theater and um, i'm really pleased to be part of their initiative to, to connect with people during this crazy time um but if anyone wants to get in touch with me personally uh, to talk further about associate work or assistant work or Amelie or anything really, then please find me on Twitter, James Callas, well, Callas, C A W L A S, Ball, like football, um, or Instagram again, James Callas Ball, or my email address, James dot Callas dot Ball at googlemail.com. 
ping me an email um, and we'll have a chat. Um, one more question. Would you outline homeschool homework on the different roles? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that question. Uh, sorry, Skippy Top. I don't understand that question. Um, okay, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, please get in touch if you want to, and please keep supporting the King's Head Theatre. They're an amazing um, organisation and made a big impact on my career, and very grateful to be here. Um, and all of the best. Safe uh, and keep safe and keep positive for the time ahead. All right. Um, over and out Facebook. Ta-ra. End live video. And...